Hey everyone, it's Chris at Lime Punch Forge. Today we're gonna do a long overdue how to use, set up, and uh, work this thingy bobber. The Lime Punch Forge engraving adapter from Pepe Tools. So stay tuned and we will talk about what comes in the box, how to set it up on your flex shaft hammer, and then we'll head downstairs to the studio and talk about what flex shafts do what and how to power it. So stay with us and we'll be back. All right, so you guys have purchased your Lime Punch Forge engraving adapter, or you're looking for a little bit more information on how to use it, what to use it for, how it exactly it sets up with your existing flex shaft, and uh, we'll go from there. So to open the box, okay, see it? There we go. We have our engraving adapter, and we have our set screw and our barrel, and then the screw that fits into the uh, hammer handpiece. So, with it comes two and potentially three screws. The newer ones will come with a third screw. It's a grub screw, meaning that when you, it's a, it doesn't have a top like these guys. It has just, just the threads and then the Allen head is inside of it. So it'll come with an extra Allen key and then that screw in case you wanted to use it without having anything sticking up here. So this one though, has your two set screws, one longer, one shorter, in case you have a smaller diameter uh, graver that you wanna use. This one is a two millimeter square. It also accepts a one eighth round graver but this one comes with the square in two millimeter by two millimeter. So, and then your Allen key. And then a nice little box. This little box will contain it if you wanna keep it in there or you can do something else. So once we have it, let's talk about setting it up. I like using the short set screw. So I will go ahead and just hand thread that in easily and then before I get too far in there I want to make sure that the set screw does not protrude down into the barrel of the engraving adapter and the reason there is the back end of this graver is slightly tapered right there and if the screws down a little bit it's gonna catch on that taper and it's gonna tighten down right here which means that when you start running it it'll pop out and you don't want that so what we're going to do first is we're going to insert the graver. I like having the cutting face parallel to the set screw, and I'm going to make sure it's in all the way. If it's in all the way, that means that the percussion from the hammer hand piece will contact the graver and give a little bit better percussion and transfer of energy into that graver. So once we have that in there where we want it, I'm going to just hand tighten it down and it'll set and it wiggles right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take this Allen key and I'm going to use the Allen key to kind of tighten it down. And I think it was, let's see how, I'll give you guys an example of exactly how much you wanna tighten it down. So if we are at a 12 o'clock position, we're gonna to move to eh, about a two o'clock position. So it's not gonna take much to snug that down. You might need to do it a little bit more, maybe down to a three to three o'clock position, but it does not take a lot. And the graver should not wiggle in there when you got it here. So this is how you set up the basic setup that you have once you have your engraving adapter arrive. Second thing you're gonna to wanna to do is grab your hammer handpiece. This one is a Fordham. This is a Fordham H15D. D stands for duplex, which is this spring right here. And this is the first thing to break if you have a duplex. Um, you just gotta be careful with it. You don't overextend it, bend it too much, yank on it, twirl it, stomp on it. You don't wanna do anything like that. So this is durable. I've had this for a couple years now and it's had some use, but it still works perfectly. Duplex is nice and springy. See? All right. So once we have the engraving adapter, 
we're going to insert it into a hammer hand piece. And this little shoulder should contact the hammer. And it should, that's your hammer action. So I have it just hand tight right now. What you're gonna wanna do though, is take your Allen wrench, stick it on there, and use that just as a little bit tweak. Just tweak it over a little bit. So you have a nice and tight interaction between both threads. So that shoulder's on there nice and tight, and your hammer hand piece and your engraving adapter aren't gonna pop off when you don't really want it to, which is pretty much any time you're using it. So that's basically how you put this guy together. And we're gonna talk a little bit about engraving philosophy from a very basic point of view. It will allow you guys to kinda of just get started. And we're gonna get on some paper and do that real fast. So join me in just a second, I'll be back. Okay, we're back with a little bit of engraving science. So the graver that we have on here right now is the square. So I've just drawn out what the square profile looks like. So there's kind of it here, and there's it drawn in a flat. This is it from a side profile. Now, when you get your graver, it is sharp, but it's a good idea to maybe stick some uh, uh, buffing compound on a piece of leather or belt, old belt or something like that, and contact that. Have the graver at the right position, just upright. So if this is my flat space, let me find some flat space. Here's my flat space. I wanna make sure I'm touching. And I'm gonna drag the graver backwards. Just pushing down and dragging it backwards across that polishing compound on the leather. What that's gonna do is give you, start hopefully giving you a nice polished face right down here because the more polished the face, the less interference it's gonna have those some kind of grind marks that will come in tools brand new that still need to be worked polished. Like mere, mere finish is perfect. And then what that also does is uh, what you're going to want to do is do the same thing on both of these flats and just kind of bring it up at a slight angle, maybe a, maybe a five degree. Somebody may, somebody who has a lot more experience may disagree with me, but I like to bring it up just slightly and then drag and then other side just slightly and drag. And what that's going to do is it's going to take your graver. Here it is. And it's going to drag, just polish this a little bit. This is an over-exaggeration, but what this does is kind of start creating a polished heel. That heel will kind of help you dig in. But that aside, we're not going to go over video and all sharpening. We'll do that another day. Or there's other videos out there who actually know what they're doing. So we'll, we'll do one of each. You can watch other videos. Sandy Sturgeon is an awesome one. He has a series out right now on the Sharpen Engravers. It's as basic as it possibly can be, and he does an amazing job explaining it. So, when you start, when you start, do I have an engraving piece over here? I do not, but we'll practice. We'll pretend. So, here's the top flat surface of your metal. So, if this was what I was going to engrave, this represents side profile of the metal. Now, say I want my final depth to be somewhere down in here for my line or my groove or my circle or scroll or whatever I want. So I have my line down there. What I'm gonna do is, I'm not gonna take all of that off at once. This is gonna be multiple cuts. So the first thing I wanna do is take my graver and I'm going to raise it up here. Let it go down in just a little bit. And then once it's down in, I'm going to lower my angle. And then start tracing a line around what I'm going to engrave. What this does, it gives you a slight dig in. And you're going to go nice and light on this first pass. This first pass is going to establish a trough. So here's my side profile metal again. The first pass is just going to establish this little trough. And if my finish is down here, what's gonna happen is, is as I go, this is gonna get deeper and wider. 
because this face right here and this face right here dictate the total depth or total width of what you're able to engrave with this particular engraver. So if you follow that line and just take little cuts at a time, you'll get down to your depth. The other thing that this does is allow you to make corrections along the way. So if I'm following a line and I go and veer off just a little bit on my first cut, you should probably see that, there you go. You go veer off just a little bit on my first cut. The width of my final cut is maybe here. So it allows me to get it back in line and then eventually make some cleanup cuts to kind of get me back in track. This takes practice. This is not something you're gonna pick up and go, bam, I'm an amazing engraver. You might, and if you do, I'm jealous. But this is an entry level tool that allows for people who wanna try engraving to get into engraving for less than it costs to buy a professional air graving kit. Professional air graving kits anywhere between 800 and 3000 on up, depending on what you get, what you get with it, how much you upgrade it, and all that. This little guy right now retails for $55. Your hammer hand piece, you can find between 120 and probably about 160, 180, depending on where you buy it from. Right now, this is the cheapest way to get into engraving for a beginner. Is it perfect? It's not something that somebody, you know, who's using air graver for years and years and years and has a setup may necessarily want to give a try. But for the rest of us who are hobbyists, who are, you know, just starting out in metalsmithing, who are just took a class and that class wants to uh, start engraving for schools, for uh, studios who want to start engraving, teaching students how to engrave, this is a good option. And if you don't have a whole lot of money sitting around, which most of us don't, this is a good, inexpensive option to get it started. So that's what we got there. And we're going to go ahead and take a slight break here. And I will meet you guys up in the studio and we'll talk about not science, but motors. I don't want to spell that out. So we'll see you guys soon.